Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 645. Headlines about menopause are meant to scare us. Don't be manipulated. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that's menopause. So I'm going to talk about it in a little different way this time, not in a necessarily a medical doctor's way of looking at it, but as a woman, how I feel when I read headlines that are absolutely positively made to be a lie to women, to make us afraid to make us not do anything about our symptoms of menopause. Now, the average age of menopause is between 51 and 52. Half of our population or more of women are older than that. And we are all mothers or workers or we all have jobs. We all participate very much in society. We're bringing up our kids. We're usually the primary um, child care uh, worker in the house, not always, but we need to have our energy and we need to be able to get into our, our um, whatever our work is and be able to succeed. If we want to succeed after 50, we are going to have to get hormones. We are going to have to get treated for our menopause. So traditionally, um, before 2002, we were treated in a way for our menopausal symptoms. We were given Premarin or Premarin and Provera, and our mothers were treated for, um, for estrogen deprivation in menopause as well. But in the year 2002, the WHI study came out and, and scared women. And it scared women and doctors because of the title. And the title was Hormone Replacement Therapy and that usually means estrogen and progesterone, uh, cause breast cancer and heart disease. Those, that statement is actually untrue. And if you read the study, you'll see that it is untrue. But the title went across like wildfire at that time and made every doctor except my practice stop hormones for their patients. It was the fact that nobody read the real article or the real study. And even if you did read it, it was a little, you had to have some facts under your belt to actually understand it. So this was a play, I believe, to get women off of estrogen because estrogen is one of the highest cost items on the Medicare um, list of, of medicines. And it did. It went down to like number, I don't know, 10. So it is no longer the most expensive cost for Medicare, so it saved them money. But what did it do to us? I just don't believe in somebody else telling me or telling you uh, from a distance what I need or what you need. So having a blanket statement like this, especially one that is a lie, uh, is, is abhorrent to me. So I have to explain what this has actually done now, 20 years later. Um, I, was, I was at a ga gathering of a 70-year-old um, guy, and all the women at this party this past week came up to me and said, oh my gosh, you look so good for your age and for, you know, what are you doing? What, what can I do to, to, to look and obviously feel like you do? I said, well, you know what I do for a living? I actually take my own advice and I try to follow a proper diet and exercise regularly. And I also take bioidentical estradiol and testosterone. 
at that, <laughs> most of the people that said this to me, and they, it was all through the night, they, they turned around and said, I don't want breast cancer and walked away. <laughs> they didn't ask me about, I mean, their fear was so overwhelming that they didn't want to know anymore. They didn't want to hear anything that I had to say, even though I would have told them that estrogen doesn't cause breast cancer. It may feed breast cancer after you have it, but it doesn't cause it. And testosterone, which is the other hormone I take, wasn't even mentioned, but that is something that decreases our risk of cancer. Some people that I've run into in the recent past who don't know me and don't know what I do always ask me my age or ask me what I'm doing to stay young. I tell them, and I say that I'm taking testosterone, and they and they, they flip around and say, I don't want facial hair and to go bald and walk away. Well, I'm not I, I don't have facial hair and I'm not bald. And this is this is what I take. This is what I've taken for 20 years. This is not something that I just took for two weeks. They wanted to know what my treatment was for aging, and I told them. And it's really funny how fear has been integrated into our lives to manage our, our spending and, and manage our choices. So, sadly, it seems that this problem is being orchestrated by government, by the American College of OBGYN, who doesn't even acknowledge testosterone as one of our hormones. And testosterone is actually a higher, it has a higher blood level than estradiol before we lose both of them in menopause. So all I'm advocating is you can live better, you can lose the symptoms of menopause, and you can slow aging if you replace the hormones that you used to make yourself and replace them in the most natural way that you can. And nobody stops to listen to that part. And they don't stop to listen to the fact that they've been lied to all this time. It is so ingrained in their beliefs that fear has clouded their vision. So just imagine how terrible this is for people who can't sleep because they can't sleep, they can't think, they can't go to work and be productive. When they do go to work, People say, what's wrong with you? Why are you not doing blank, blank, blank? Why have you made these mistakes? Why? But, and they can't do any, try any harder because if you don't have your hormones, your brain doesn't work completely like it used to. It's not as fast. It's not as, it's not your spatial um, ability to see things spatially and to problem solve decrease. You need to have estrogen and testosterone at least to maintain your brain. So what if you're a, a woman who has gained 40 pounds since menopause, but you go to your doctor and you sit down with her and she says, you know, you say, I, I need to lose weight. Maybe I should replace my hormones. And she says, that's not going to work. And, but she won't tell you what is going to work. And so you leave with no answer. The, the biggest thing that has been taught to doctors is protect yourself from a lawsuit because there are some people that believe estrogen may cause breast cancer or heart disease. And that's probably true if somebody hasn't read anything since 2002 and did not read the whole study, they could think they were an expert in this, but they're not because I've read everything since. And it is not, that's a complete lie. And it is something that doctors are telling their patients and still telling their patients, even now because a retraction which has, they've done a lot of studies that retracted this idea that estrogen caused breast cancer and estrogen or and testosterone uh, doesn't help you and you don't need it because you're not a man. Testosterone's a man's hormone, so we don't get any. Well, it's simply not true. So when you hear the same thing over and over again, you start to believe it. If, by the time people get to my office, they've been to three, four, five different doctors who have dismissed them. They haven't heard them. They haven't listened to the pain they've been in. And they are, um, they're hopeless. They feel hopeless. So when they give me their symptoms of depression and, of course, you'd be depressed if you kept looking for an answer and didn't find one from the experts that you always thought knew everything. 
And if you were dismissed by a doctor who delivered your babies and you loved that doctor and they just treated like you like you were worrying about something that didn't matter and that there was no treatment for. There's a treatment for all the symptoms of, of menopause and a treatment for the symptoms of testosterone deficiency. You can't be dismissed. It's just that your doctor doesn't know enough. <laughs> It's a huge problem. It's everywhere across the United States. Doctors are saying, I don't believe in hormones, or I, I don't think hormones will help you. Just, just forget about it. Just relax. Well, you can't relax if you can't sleep, and you're gaining weight every time you eat anything or don't eat. Uh, when you're so tired, you can't do the things around the house that you need to do. Your motivation's gone. I mean, you're, you don't want to have sex, so your marriage is going away right down the tube. I mean... <laughs> All of those things are very important to women, and all of those things may be affected by your hormones and may need to have replacement to get all of those things treated. We should be treating menopause like a disease. We treat osteoporosis like a disease. We even prevent osteoporosis by giving a variety of very expensive and risky drugs when we could just give patients estrogen and testosterone. And that would prevent their osteoporosis. But it is not considered the best treatment. And they don't even look at testosterone because, of course, American College of OBGYN has still not acknowledged that testosterone is a female hormone. I don't know how they can be that blind, but they are. So I guess they just don't want to deal with us. So basically, obstetricians are trained to deliver babies and do surgery but not trained to take care of menopause. And the biggest interest is in those first two things and no interest in us as we age. Well, we spend more time aging than we do being fertile and delivering babies so, or having babies. So this is a very, a very difficult kind of a change to make, but they should just separate gynecology and OB and have some of the doctors who like doing OB do that and some of the doctors do GYN. But that hasn't happened and I don't see it in the near future. And they should train us better about how to take care of women to prevent the diseases of aging like osteoporosis, heart disease, breast cancer, obesity, diabetes. All of those things have to do with your sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone and some somewhat progesterone. So What's in a headline and why does that bother me so much? Well, first thing is headlines that are on a medical article or even a, a newspaper article are not written by the person who wrote the article. They're written by an editor. So if the editor doesn't understand the real problem or the real subject, then the headline will be misleading. Or if they are trying to um, make a statement or trying to get readers the best way to get readers is to scare them. So they'll come back and read again to see if you've got anything else for them, any other information. Um, this is one of those uh, things that I noticed when I was the headline on, um, on television when the former governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, who is 52 years old and menopausal, is, uh, she's running for president. And one of the people in her own party described her at 52 as over the hill when they are touting candidates to be president who are 80 or over 80 male of course because we would they would never allow us to be there at 80 because we might like we might have a hot flash and not be able to make a decision <laughs> This belief is even gotten into the political realm, and it, it's, it is really crazy. But some of, some of the things, besides that on television, some of the things that are in, um, in the news, I, I have several different articles, titles that I just picked up in the last couple of weeks that make people afraid of menopause but don't give us an answer. They don't say, they give you... So, something like in July 2023 on um, in Health Day News online, there was a headline, ovarian cancer risk among women with polycystic ovar ovarian disease doubles after menopause. So 
They don't say that it doesn't double. You can prevent that by taking hormones and suppress the activity of the ovaries. They don't say that. They just say, oh no, you're menopausal. Now you've got a new thing to worry about. You've got ovarian cancer to worry about, which is very rare and um, something that uh, usually runs in families. And, and I've only seen two or three cases in my 29 years of doing OBGYN. So it's not something we should all be worrying about. And it's not a lot of patients if you double the number. If, <laughs> if, um, if you're menopausal and you have polycystic ovaries. So this was a non-study, a study that really doesn't apply to most of us, but it scared people. It scares women. They're afraid of ovarian cancer because things like this keep coming up in the news, not in, in real medicine. So then the, the next title is women who undergo bilateral oophorectomy. That means taking both ovaries out before menopause have a greater risk of developing Parkinson's disease years later. They don't say, if you replace your hormones, then that risk goes away. They just say, if you're menopausal, and they're assuming you're not taking anything for that, and that's the study was done on people not taking hormones, then and you've had your ovaries out, then you're at risk for Parkinson's disease, another scare tactic. Um, then we go to, um, that was in Health Day. Then we go to another online uh, magazine. Removal of both ovaries before menopause tied to risk of chronic health conditions. Okay, well, if you take your ovaries out and don't replace your estrogen and testosterone, then you are at risk for osteoporosis, diabetes, heart disease, all kinds of cancer, obesity. All of those things, the diseases of aging, do increase in risk if you have no ovaries or if you are in menopause, but they don't if you replace the hormones. The risk goes back down. That's never said in any of these articles. And last but not least, gout risk, gout, which is a, a, a disease usually of men, uh, usually related to eating too much red meat and drinking too much alcohol, and it is a genetic type of risk. But this title said, Gout Risk Higher for Postmenopausal Women. That was in Helio um, and I, on August 14th of this year. <laughs> so every place you look, menopause means you're going to get sick and die. It just makes women depressed. It makes them feel like they don't have any hope. You're menopausal. Nothing's going to help you, honey. You're just going to get sick and die. So what that does is decrease your ability to have energy enough to go get some help or to demand help or to, I mean, even question your doctor when he says, I don't believe in hormones. And you say, I'm hot, I'm hot flashing. I'm night sweating. I can't have sex because my vagina is too dry. It hurts. I bleed from my vagina ripping during intercourse. And they, and doctors without compassion just say, yeah, you're going to have to live with it. Just suck it up. Well, <laughs> that's not what we say to people with cancer. It's not what we say to people with heart disease. It's not what we say to people who have diabetes and need their leg cut off. It's, it's not what we say to anybody with an illness. Menopause actually puts us in a position of having an illness. We need to be treated to get back to where we were before menopause. And we can be healthier and live longer and have more full lives if we actually understand that and demand what we need. We need to demand that from our government. We need to not buy into all this brainwashing and we need to demand it from our doctors. And if your doctor doesn't listen to you, hear you, want to treat you, don't wait 10 years before you leave, just leave. If they don't want to help you, then they're not doing their job. So go find another doctor. That's my, that's my answer to this and find treatment because you deserve it. You need it. You had the babies. You took care of the family. You've done all the work. You hold a job. I mean, in general, women are doing twice the work they ever were meant to do. And we need to be taken care of so that we can continue to do this work and continue to excel in our fields. So please, please hear me. You have the right to change doctors, you have the right to complain. You have the right to get the treatment that you need. I'm glad you were here, I hope you heard me. 
and I hope you feel good about finding a treatment for your menopause. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.